Good morning. Welcome to today's UPS Teamsters United webinar on making UPS um, deliver better pensions. This Zoom is organized by UPS Teamsters United and Teamsters for a Democratic Union. My name is Sean Williams. I am a local Teamster from Local 71 and the elected co-chair of the Teamsters for a Democratic Union Steering Committee. For those of you who do not know, TDU is a grassroots network of Teamster members. TDU started the UPS Teamsters United campaign to bring Teamsters together to fight for the contract and pensions that we deserve. We support our international union contract um, campaign at UPS and we are independent of the IBT. Today's webinar is a full-time UPSers, it's for full-time UPSers who are in the IBT UPS pension fund. This is the biggest pension plan for full-time UPS. It covers over 60,000 UPSers in 22 states. As a, local, as a member of Local 71, I'm covered by this pension plan as well. And I want a better retirement plan for me and my family. We get the lowest pension of all the major funds covering the UPSers. When we retire from our fund, we would get at least $1,000 less than um, less a month than most Teamsters and other funds. Here is a list of the locals that are covered by this fund, including all the states in the Southern region, the Carolinas, Colorado, and most of the states in the Central region, region not including Wisconsin, St. Louis area, Indiana, or Illinois. If your local is not included in this list, then you're, you are not covered by, you are covered by another pension fund. You may be wondering why we aren't all UPS, you may be wondering why all UPSs are not covered by the same pension plan. It's just, it just doesn't work that way. There are more than 20 pension funds that cover UPS Teamsters. They are run independently and have different finances. They cannot be changed or merged. We can win better pensions, but we need to do it by making our pensions an issue in the contract. That's what we are here to do today. Our national negotiation negotiators are fighting for higher pensions, but the company needs to see that the members are ready to fight as well. Members across the 22 states are launching campaigns, including information leaflets and petitions. We have rally signs too. At the end of the call, you will get an email and a text and or a text to order potential campaign toolkits. If you are, if, if we are going to win this pension, we deserve, we need volunteers to get involved and reach out to members where they work and in every local and every building. That's what we are here to do today. We'll explain how our pension pension works and what we can do to win a better pension in 2023 contract. To get us started, I wanna introduce Kim Powell. He is the founder of TDU and has helped members organize successful campaigns to stop pension cuts and to win a better pension plan. Kim? Good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, good to be here with so many good Teamsters and uh, people who are concerned about their pensions and Teamster pensions. A um, little bit of background, Teamsters for Democratic Union, TDU has been involved with improving, watchdogging, protecting pensions for decades. Uh, we have fought to improve and defend pensions. We've ended up suing some of the funds sometimes, including the central states multiple times on issues like the reemployment rule, on uh, providing financial reports on a quarterly basis to members. We just published the last one a week ago, for example. Uh, and we fought to fund when central states, which anyone on this call, more than 16 years seniority, you were in central states, you know that. Um, when they wanted to slash benefits, we were in the forefront of that battle, along with our allies in Washington, the Pension Rights Center. Fred Zuckerman played an important role in that. 
And we sparked an independent grassroots movement to save pensions a decade ago. And that movement worked diligently. And two years ago, the Butch Lewis Act became law and protecting the pensions of millions of families in this country, not just Teamsters, but in particular, the Central States Fund. Pensions are one of the best things about having a Teamster contract. You work hard at UPS for decades, you earn a good pension. If you were at FedEx, you'd get peanuts compared to what you get at UPS. It's a selling point for the union, so it's very, very important. On the screen is the so-called SPD. It's a term of art, the Summary Plan Description. This little booklet is the sort of handy Bible of your plan. Everyone has a right to it. We got the URL on the screen. It'll probably be made available to everyone so you could look through it. Every pension plan must, by law, publish a summary plan description, and it must be accurate and understandable to workers, and it generally is. I think this one is. Uh, this fund doesn't make it easy for you. They're not real user-friendly. It lives in UPS's headquarters. Try calling them up and get answers. Good luck. But you can get answers in writing, and there is a form there to provide that. So we're going to take a, a few minutes and give the basics on the fund. That's not why we can't do a full class on that. But we're going to do, do some basics so we all have the background when we talk about fighting to improve pensions. Let's take a look at the next slide shows you in Article 34, page 102 of the labor contract which is online at the Teamsters, international teamster.org site and tdu.org. You can see it, you can go to page 102 and you will see your pensions right there in the contract. There they are, 30 and out is $3,800. 31 and out is $3,900 in between those bottom two there. So you, that's the early retirement benefits and they're listed right in the contract. If you read that entire contract from the first page to the 180th or whatever, you will not see the benefits of any other full-time plan, zero. The other 20 plans or so, not in the book. Where are their pensions determined? Their pensions are set by the trustees of those various funds, whether it's in Central Pennsylvania, the Western Conference, New England, Chicago 705, and the various funds different from this one. What it will say in the contract is that the contract will provide for increased money that UPS pays those funds. Typically right now, now this varies from fund to fund, even local to local, sometimes money has gone to health and welfare diversion or something. About $13 an hour is paid in on all straight time hours in the other fund. That's a ballpark figure. Now you multiply 13 by 2,080 hours in a year and you get 27,000 bucks. That's a pretty good shot. That's what's funding other people's pensions. Your pension is not funded that way. It's just paid by UPS. They don't put any, they don't have to put any amount in the pot. They have to put in enough to cover the pensions that you're guaranteed. This is a huge difference. I'm gonna give you one tiny example. Suppose you're in California and you work at UPS for four years and then you quit. 13 bucks an hour, four years, it's over $100,000. Where'd the money go? You didn't get a pension because five years to vest in all these plans. You got nothing. The $100,000 went to fund and boost the pensions of all the other Teamsters in the West. Four years in this plan, you don't get anything. You didn't invest. Where'd the money go? Went into management's pocket. That's the answer. Didn't go to anyone else. They didn't put in any money. That's the end of your story. It's just an example that while this fund can benefit you because you can see exactly what you're getting in the, in the contract, it's a benefit to the corporation as well. Uh, let's, this chart, you know, it's a reasonable approach, but what we're saying is these numbers aren't, are lower than other pensions. And the next slide will show that. Before we go on though, um, a member, pointed something out to me that I just want to say, Brother John Wagner, a lot of smart members are looking at this in Minnesota. In 1997, the 30 and out pension for everyone 
if you were working then on this call was $3,000. Today, 26 years later, it's $3,800. You're thinking that hasn't remotely kept up with inflation, and you're right. Furthermore, he pointed out it hasn't even kept up with thinking of it in terms of the wages. In 1997, $3,000 would have replaced 89% of a full-time worker's 40-hour week salary. Today, 55%, from 89 to 55 relative to wages. So it hasn't really kept up. Let's look at the next slide, just for a few quick examples. It's hard to compare all the various plans because they all have different rules. Some of them have very parallel rules on there, like New York and New Jersey. And you can see that they are better instead of 30 and out being $3,800, it's 47 or 4750. You'd rather have that thousand bucks extra, of course. The Western Conference Fund, notice how it gives a high figure, five to 6,000, but it's kind of vague. There is no 30 and out in the Western Conference. It's based on accrual. They also have, they don't call it 80 and out, they call it pure 80. No, you don't have to work 80 years. It's years plus service. So this is the other largest fund. There are two giant funds and many smaller funds that cover like, like New York, New Jersey, Central PA, upstate New York, et cetera. The other giant fund, uh, they use 80 and it is age plus years. If you're 53 and you have 27 years of service in the fund, you made 80, 53 plus 27. You can get your full pension and that accrual pension pays over $5,000 right now on average to people retiring, far superior. So those, that's, uh, uh, those are important examples. Let's look at the next slide. Um, now, one of the things we wanna cover in just the next few minutes, I'm not gonna talk too long, but is accrual. And most of you understood that first slide, but some people might go, what the hell is this? This is page 100 in the labor contract, Article 34, page 100. Every year you get an accrual. This is how much your pension is improved that year. So if you work five more years, five times 175 is 875. Your pension would go up 875 bucks a month. Sounds nice. Let, now, this is confusing because you're thinking, is that 3,800 going up? No, it's a whole different method. There are two ways to evaluate your pension, and the fund is going to pay you the higher of the two, whichever works better for you. Let's look at the next one. The next one, look at the history of the accrual. This fund was started on January 1, 2008, and the accrual was 132 bucks a year. So over the years, the union has bargained it up. But notice the last 10 years are all 170 or 175. It's pretty friggin' puny increase. It's plateaued, it's not good. Then down at the bottom, the annual accrual this year in the Western Fund, the other big fund is 350 bucks, which is conveniently double 175. Well, you're not half as good, you're just as good. And it illustrates an issue and uh, we'll talk just a little bit more on accrual. Let's look at the next one, what the impact of the accrual is. So those numbers we just looked at, if you add them up, this is Annie. We'll call her Annie Accrual, Sister Accrual. She's a package car driver. She started on January 1, 2009. It's a hypothetical example. So if you add up all those numbers we just saw, her accrued benefit right now is 2,473. Annie's thinking she might work another 30 years and get her 30 years in. How much will her accrual be looking forward? Well, if it stays 175, we add 15 more years times 175, we get $5,098 a month. That would be good. Although 15 years from now, you're thinking inflation may not be too good. What if the accrual went up to 250? Look at the difference. What if it went up to 300? Look at the difference. You can see that the difference between 175 and 300 is a huge difference. Your pension goes from about 5,000 to about 7,000. So 
the accrual can be extremely important, especially going forward. Now, we obviously don't expect this number 175 to instantly jump to 300 in a new contract. But if it's going up over this contract, the next contract, and so on, that could be done. Let's look at the next slide. OK, why accrual matters. That was the first what reason it matters, looking forward to really boost pensions. Here, this is actually from, I'm kind of selling the summary plan description booklet. If you look in page five of your pension plans booklet, the summary plan description, we got the URL for everyone to look at it. You will see Sarah, that's what they call her, hypothetical person. Sarah retired five months ago, the beginning of this year. After 22 years of working, and Sarah is 55, how much does she get? Now, it's interesting. If she was 62, what would she get? She would get $3,871 down below. That's the six. This is a ter another term of art. Normal retirement age in this plan is 62. So in using the accrual method, that's your normal retirement age. Now, remember the early retirement, that's any age by definition, 30 and out. You're going to be if you started when you're 20, you can get 30 and out when you're 50. But notice how with just 22 years, she is getting more than the 30 and out teamster by the accrual if she were 62. She's not. In their hypothetical example, she's 55. So you have to lop off, and this is very standard in pension plans, 6% a year. So if she was 61, she'd only take off 6%. But she's 55, she has to take off 42%. She gets 2245. Remember, that's for just 22 years. Had she chosen, looked at that early and out chart, her pension would have been $900. So the accrual is very important. I'm going to make a venture a guess here that at least half the people on this call are going to re retire under the accrual. Why? Either one, they're going to work till they're nearly 62 and build up a higher pension. Or two, they're going to retire and not not qualify for 30 and out. So they're going to have to be like Sarah and use the accrual. So the accrual becomes very important. Let's look at the next one, kind of uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about here. Oh, one other thing on Sarah. Let's go back to Sarah. Regress one slide just for a second. Notice how it says CSPF in the top line going across, Central States Pension Fund. Sarah had years, had eight years under the central state's pension plan. She's actually getting two checks. Everyone on this call that has 16 or more that you started before January 1, 2008, you get two checks. Now, nobody gets checks anymore. They just they use electronic transfer. But you get two payments. You really don't need to be concerned about that because your pen, UPS is guaranteeing your total pension. Whatever central states pays, they pay the rest. When that thing says $3,800, if central states pays $1,000, they are going to give you $2,800. So it looks a little more complicated than it is. Final thing on this. Suppose Sarah had been a part-timer for five years before all this. She would get a third payment. Your part-time plan, sadly, is completely independent. It's as if it was a separate company. Now, it won't pay her much. Five years, 25 years ago or so in that plan, it'll be a tiny check, but it would even be a third pension. Let's go on to the final one here that I'm going to talk about, which is, here's the punchline. We can make UPS deliver better pensions. It's in the contract. It's in Article 34. You're going to see it. You're going to know it. You're going to spread the word. You're going to have other people seeing it and knowing it. Increase the 30 and out and all the early retirement benefits and increase the accrual. Two things to do. They're on two pages in the contract. So it's fairly simple. It's direct. And the negotiators are bargaining for a higher pension. There are rank and filers on the bargaining committee who are in this plan with you. 
the company needs to see that people care about this. They know people care about 22.4. They've got the message. The memo reached the corporation. There's going to be 22.4 will be eliminated or there'll be a strike on August 1. They need to hear, oh, it isn't just the negotiating committee talking about pensions. The workers are going to reject any contract. The workers are mad. The workers want a better pension. They don't want to have the, the lowest pension in the biggest plan. So that's what we're talking about today. And thanks much for being on the call. Thank, Thank you. you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. We appreciate it. A lot of great information there. Um, we have time for some questions and answers at the end of the um, call. Use the question function now to submit any questions that you may have. The question function is at the bottom of your screen. That's the participant. The bottom line is this. We can win a higher 30 and out pension contract. We can win a higher accrual, but the company needs to see members informed and fired up about this contract, about this issue. We have a pension improvement organizing toolkit with leaflets and petitions. We have rally signs as well. Some of you already are using the contract, contract campaign toolkits like palm cars and toolkits for part-timers and, and, and inside workers. Before we get to questions and answers, what we wanna do is hear from the contract organizing that is going on in your area. And how, you, how do you plan to use the new pension improvement toolkit? First up, let's hear from Tana Fisher. Tana is newly elected president of Local 90 in Des Moines, Iowa. The Nation Magazine just ran a great article on how Teamsters and TDU members are leading the contract fight. Tana? Morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Tanner Fisher. I'm the president of Teamsters Local 90 here in Des Moines. We ran for office last year because we were sick of the status quo and feeling like we were always on the defense when dealing with the company. Since we took office in January, we've been all in on the contract campaign. We've been leafleting, doing steward trainings, and we managed to get 77% of our membership to sign pledge cards. We even turned the pledge card drive into an op organizing opportunity by taking incidentally filled out pledge cards by non-members and uh, calling them later and getting them signed up for the union. We had an awesome parking lot rally with over 10% of our local in attendance. We brought in community members, politicians, and the rank and file to speak on the struggle of life at UPS. We're excited to work on this pension campaign. UPS has to see that this isn't just another issue and the teams just are done settling short. There's no reason why workers in the IBT pension plan cannot retire with dignity and respect. 60,000 workers are covered by these, this substandard plan and unless we make our voices heard and show them that this is an issue that cannot get pushed to the wayside, uh, nothing will get done. 3,800 uh, for 30 years is not enough for all the hard work the Teamsters do, and we all need more. We need to let the company know that's, that's what we need. Uh, we all need to order these signs and petitions and leaflets and begin distributing them around the workplace to show the company that we're unified for a dignified retirement. I need everyone to fill out that uh, petition link. We need, I want to have 60,000 names on that thing. That's how we show the company we're serious. Uh, TDU and the International Union are working together to win at UPS, and I'm a proud TDU member. If you're not a, U, a TDU member, you should join. We would not be doing what we're doing at Local 90 without the help of TDU. Uh, with that, I'd like to kick it back over to Sean Williams. Thank you. Great work, Tana. Thank you. Next, let's head to the great state of Texas and hear from Pete Zapata. Is here from San Antonio Local 657. Pete. Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is uh, Pete Zapata Jr. I'm a 34-year uh, uh, Teamster member of Local 657 and uh, out of South Texas. I would like to thank, first of all, our President Sean O'Brien, uh, Secretary Treasurer Fred Zuckerman, as well as everyone else who is uh, fighting UPS agreed on so many of our issues like our pension. Uh, like, brother, before this pension, oh, it, a pension overhaul is exactly what we need and deserve. It's been a long time coming. If anybody's been paying attention to our, uh, our past contracts, it, it just showed you right there that our, it's been stagnant and it can't be stagnant no more. So we will be organizing a separate Zoom to follow up <clears throat> and make plans for passing out uh, pension information and getting signatures on the pension uh, petition across Texas. There's more than 25,000 UPS teamsters in Texas and we can have a huge impact if we're organized. We just got to stay focused. So we, what we've been doing out here in uh, McAllen, Texas, 
We've been trying to go on a weekly basis, passing out flyers, information, just so the members stay focused and, and stay uh, informed and educated about what's going on right now. So thank you very much. God bless you all. Thanks, Pete. We appreciate it. Mississippi, local 891 is in the house. Roger again. How do you, how do you, how do the members of your members local of your feel local about the potential and the issues and what do you plan to do? Good morning to everyone, my fellow teamsters. Uh, from Macomb, Mississippi, local 891. I'm a 30 year package car driver, had four years part time, 20, currently 26 years full time. From the beginning on contract recommendations, Pension was the number one issue in Macomb, Mississippi. I talked with many, many other centers throughout our uh, southern region and found that to be true also. It's my understanding the southern supplement, that was the number one issue in the whole south was pension increases and health and the welfare of our insurance. You know, during the past uh, contracts, we have not seen any pension increases. Uh, we were given an illustration earlier about how much the pension has not grown. It, I have the same illustration in Macomb 26 years ago, a uh, 30 year package car driver retired at 51 years old through $3,000 a month pension. His insurance was $100 a month. Here I am 26 years later, I can draw 3,400 in 30 years. My insurance is $200 a month. That's a $300 increase over 26 years. That just does not cut it. We've got to do better and we must do better. In prior agreements, if y'all very well know, the little increase that we got was spread across the five years of the contract. That does not do anything. We need a significant increase and it needs to be front loaded and it needs to go into effect August 1, 2023. It does not need to be spread out over the five years. When this is spread out, cost of living eats your raise up. It does nothing. The last re uh, report I got on the UPS IBT pension fund, it was 106% funded, almost 106% funded. The money is there. UPS is making the money. We deserve more and we should get more. Now I'm not gonna put a dollar amount. I've heard 5,000, I've heard 5,500 thrown out there. We've all seen the illustrations on the screen. We're the lowest, we deserve the biggest raise. We deserve it up front. And we need to be careful that you know, they don't raise our insurance to take the raise away. We also need to keep our insurance premium as low as possible, but maintain quality health care. Uh, you know, we've been engaged through this the whole from August when it kicked off the campaign. You know, our members are informed and we will continue to be informed and I will be ordering this uh, information for our pension to make everybody aware and keep it on the forefront. You know, someone spoke earlier about a contract not passing. That's true. I figure, I feel if we don't get a significant increase in the beginning, that the members of the UPS IBT will not vote to pass this contract. I hope we get there and we've all worked hard for it and we deserve a better pension. Uh, we all signed, we had about a 95% contract unity pledge card turned back in that was sent in. I was fortunate enough April 17th to be in Washington by mistake really, but I spoke with many members of the negotiating committee while I was there. And we need to need to keep stay informed. The app is a good tool, but we need information. And that, that's Roger McComb and thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Roger, we appreciate it. UPSs are working together all across Ohio to win a strong contract and a better pension. Daryl Pace, tell us what you're up to. Good morning, everyone. Daryl Pace, local 413, Columbus, Ohio. Patrick car driver for three years now. 
It's inspiring to see the turnout today on this webinar. Before I say anything else, I want to thank David Levine for affording me the opportunity to speak today, and also to Willem Morris for all his hard work and nonstop effort he gave us in Ohio. The last three days, we traveled across the state and stopped at the gates and talked to full-time workers about the pension. It's impossible for me to put into words how fulfilling it is to see that momentum building one conversation at a time. Whether they knew about the pension or they weren't aware of what was going on with the pension, you're either fueling a fire that was already there or you're igniting a spark that's going to become a fire and somebody knew a full-time and I didn't know that their, their pension was low. Every signature we get amplifies our collective voice to UPS. I want that voice to be so loud, they can't ignore it. And I wanted to leave you with this. Everyone here has a platform. Everyone here has a voice. Use your platform. Platforms are not, platforms are not about having titles and not about having labels. This call could touch thousands of individuals that are not in attendance today. Everyone here has a voice. It's time to spread the word. It's time to make it grow. It's about growth now. It's time we do our part. I thank everyone for the time today. Sean, that's all I have. Thank you, Daryl. We appreciate you. Next on the books, let's head down to the bayou and get us some Cajun crawfish and hear from Aaron Woods from New Orleans Local 270. Aaron, take it away. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, Aaron Wood, uh, 34 year teamster. I want to say good morning, everyone. Uh, 30 year driver out of local 270 in New Orleans. I want to talk a second about pension. When we was at our proposal meeting in New Orleans, local 270, I was going to say it was the number one issue. It was the only issue that was mentioned. Um, you know, and I think about, I want to echo what everybody else is saying about the awareness. Um, we just have to uh, get the word out. You know, back in times past, when I started back in 89, we didn't have uh, the technology we do today. We just didn't know what the other supplements and all was having. We didn't know what was on them or anything. But today, just like we're doing right now with Zoom, we can get the awareness out and we can make it known. And, you know, you, you go back to inflation. Uh, people say, well, it costs the living up there. Inflation's high. But, you know, 20 years ago, yes, yes, I get it. But not today. Not today. It costs just as much to live down here as it does up there. And then when you throw our insurance down from, from Texas to Florida, we one storm away from not being able to afford it. It's just uh, not anymore. We're passing out outlines. We've had rallies at our building. We are uh, letting it be known to our members what's going on and just bringing it to everyone's attention and um, just making it aware. And, uh, you know, I think about, you know, we've I've worked 34 years, busting my back down here, like you said, in the bayou, and uh, it's hot down here. It's uh, not real easy. I know it's hot everywhere, but but we uh, we do the same job, drive the same package car, and work for the same company. You know, in 1919, the, the union, uh, the Teamsters adopted a slogan, and it says, Equal pay for all. That's their, that was their national slogan in 1919. And you look up what a union stands for. It says liberty, justice, and equality. That's not so in the Southern Supplement. That's not exactly so. So I want to, uh, we just got to get it out. We got to make it more aware. I want to thank y'all for having me on here and God bless y'all. God bless you too, Aaron. Appreciate you so much. Finally, let's go to the Mountain States. Members of Colorado Local 455 have been holding parking lot meetings to build a contract campaign. So let's hear from Greg Gallegos. Hello, Teamsters, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Greg Gallegos. I'm a steward from Local 455 in Aurora, Colorado. I've been with UPS for 26 years, and I'm hoping to retire soon to have more time with my four kids. But I'm not going to be able to take care of them as I want with a pension that gives me only 38,000 a month for 30 years of work. Once again, we have unequal pay for the same work as the issue. Every state in the West around Colorado gets pensions with much more money paid out each month. And I am not okay with that. There are some drivers from states born in Colorado, like Utah or Wyoming that are retiring with around $6,000 a month. I'm happy for my brothers and sisters in these places 
but I should be earning a fair pension for my work as well, especially given the high cost of living in a place like Denver. Every, everyone understands the problem with 22 fours. We can't have guys doing the same work for the different pay. So why is it okay to have pensions that pay different amounts for the same amount of work? We've got to put pressure on the company to change this. Earlier this year, we worked with TDU to organize a parking lot rally to engage young drivers. I told the 22 fours that I'll be standing right with them on August 1st if things don't change for them. This month, we're going to get out there again, but this time we're talking about pensions. And just like I will stand with young drivers in my building to win them the same rights for the same work, I know they're going to have my back to wear, win a fair pension for all the works, all the years I've worked as well. We can do this, Teamster brothers and sisters. We got to stand up. We got to stand up now. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Greg. Everyone on this call can put pressure on UPS by doing what these brothers are doing. You can pass out leaflets and rally signs. Collect petition signatures. UPS needs to see that members are getting involved and are informed. Or the company is not going to do anything. They're not going to do squat about pension. After this webinar, we will see, we will send you an online form to get leaflets and petitions and signs that you will need. Fill it out and a volunteer will get back to you. If you would like to if you like, if you like what you're hearing and want to be a part of the Teamsters who are organizing for change, join TDU today. It's just fifty dollars to join, and you'll get a free ready-to-strike hoodie. Or go to the TDU store and order the ready-to-strike T-shirt or campaign banner. We're going to close this with some questions and answers. And what questions do you have in the queue right now for us, Scott? Great, thanks, Sean. So we're gonna pitch some questions back to our expert here, Ken Path. So a couple questions from the Q&A. Um, let's start here. What about those of us who won't be able to work to the 30 or 35 and out? I may only be able to get to 20 years before I have to retire. Um, what do I get in the IBT UPS pension, Ken? My apologies, I was slow to unmute. Uh, this is a good question. If you think back to the slide we had on Sarah, she had 22 years and she could get a decent pension. At 55 today, she would get, I can't recall what, 22.45 or something, a partial pension. She won't get the full 30 an hour. But the key here is she will get an accrual based pension. If you don't make 30, you're not getting 30 and out. That's a done deal. The accrual, if it goes up, that's going to benefit everyone. It will surpass the 30 and out benefit and be superior for people, whether they have 20, 22 years, et cetera. And most especially those that get close to age 62, theirs will really go up. So the, this just points out the importance of the accrual and not just thinking of 30 and out, because I think it's a damn good question. A lot of people aren't going to make 30 years humping the package car. Great. A little more bit of a technical question, but how does the basic bailout of the central states fund help with the negotiations with UPS to increase our pension benefits? Yeah, I uh, saw this question. This is a good question. The CEO of UPS never sent us a thank you card for the Butch Lewis Act. The Butch Lewis Act in UPS's own filings to the Securities and Exchange Commission saved the corporation $4 billion. $4 billion was saved when that passed. Why? If central states is bailed out, they're not going to cut pensions. Therefore, UPS doesn't have to make up the difference because UPS has to pay you that whatever the pension is. If it's $4,000, they got to pay you $4,000. If central states is paying half of it, they're off the hook for half of it. So that was a, actually a boon, not just to save workers' pensions, but to United Parcel Service. 
And it does mean, why can't they afford better pensions? You just saved money on that law, which passed less than two years ago. Okay, switching gears, we've got a lot of questions about uh, part-time pensions in, in the chat box. Ken, um, why didn't you talk about part-time pensions on this call? Are part-timers in a different pension fund? Can you clarify this? Yes. Uh, again, there are many pension plans, they all have different rules. If you're in the Western Fund, the part-timers are in the fund. Your years automatically couple up. Three years part-time, 27 full-time, you have 30 years. You won't get as much accrual for your part-time years because maybe you were only working 20 hours a week. In this fund, you these are totally separate pension plans with no interaction. Every part-timer, in these states on this call, and everyone who used to be a part-timer, many of you, are in what's called the UPS pension plan. Sounds like it covers everyone at UPS. It doesn't. It covers part-timers. If you have five years or more in that plan, you qualify for a vested pension. So maybe you have six years part-time, 24 full-time. You're going to get two separate pensions, actually three because of central states. But unfortunately, they don't couple together. And that's not a good situation. It's the way it is. It's going to be very hard to correct that in this contract. The rules of this fund could be changed to admit your part-time years. It's a, it's a goal. And I think uh, it's one worth worth looking at. The other thing about part-time pensions is presently the 30 and out, I think it's 1950. If some smart person knows differently, put it in the chat, please. And that is also in this contract, Article 34. So undoubtedly that will be raised. But that's something, not many part, let's face it, part-timers mostly don't work 30 years part-time. That's a small minority. But they're important. They've stayed with the company all that time. They deserve a decent pension. So the part-time pension should be increased. It's very cheap for the company. You know why? They're not paying it to many people. How many part-timers do you know with 30 years seniority? Not many. So those people deserve a good pension. The 25, 30, and, th and 30, there's a 35 and out for part-timers too. I have a friend who got it. Uh, those need to be increased in this contract. And a lot of people posted about part-time, their part-time years or their long-time part-timers. And we see that's an issue that needs to be taken up as well. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Um, another technical question. A member who asked, say I already have 35 years in right now as this contract is being negotiated. Will I still get the increase that is negotiated in the new contract? And how long will I have to work under the new contract to get that increase? Okay, good question. They're all good questions. This is contractual. Uh, that is, it may say, it will say in the contract, okay, here's the new pension level. And I assume that 3,800 is gonna go up. Everyone here wants it to go up, make your voice heard. So let's say it says, let's let's go optimistic. It says 5,000 bucks. It will also say when this takes effect. Last contract, it took effect the next January 1, which would be, you know, five months after August 1, the end of the year. That may be it. I don't know. That's a contract matter. The last contract also had a second increase a couple of years later in 2020. So it could say, we're gonna increase this amount right away and this amount more. You will know in the contract when it takes effect. You can't assume it'll take effect on August 1 and just plan your retirement in August. Uh, but it's a very valid question. You expect an increase, you're looking to retire, you're gonna wait till after August 1 and see what it looks like. All right. So we have a question in the chat from brother Jeff Moore. Um, what do we do about this? What are some of the actionable things we can do in our buildings, in our area to raise the pension issue and fight to make sure we get the increase we deserve? 
So for that, I'm going to ask uh, David Levine, our TDU staff director, to step in and um, give us some information. Hi, great. Great question. These were all good questions. Um, but this is really maybe it all kind of boils down to this, I think. Uh, we know the National Negotiating Committee is going to be making a demand for higher pensions, uh, increasing the accrual in Article 34, increasing the 30 and out benefits. It's a key issue. But the company is going to be looking over the shoulder of the bargaining committee, and they're going to be seeing where do the members stand. They're doing this with all the issues that are at stake here in contract negotiations. Take like 22-4, for example. This is a demand. El eliminating the 22-4 classification is a key demand. It's on the table. The company knows uh, by seeing all the activity by uh, drivers and 22-4 standing together with RPCDs and part-timers that this has got to come out or they're not going to get a contract passed. We need to make the same thing happen on the pension issue. They've got to be looking over the shoulder of the bargaining committee and seeing people in the parking lot, seeing people going into work, talking about this issue, uniting around this issue, rallying around this issue in order to win the kinds of pension increases that we're talking about here. So what can be done practically? And maybe we can slide back to those materials that we have available. We, we have a contract campaign toolkit um, that is available to every single person on this call. It includes leaflets. Maybe we can get to that slide. It might be the next one. It includes petitions. It includes rally signs. Um, and you can order all this stuff for free. You're going to get, uh, you can either just go to our website or you can reply to the um, message that you're going to get after this call and fill out a form, order these supplies. Um, we'll have a volunteer follow up with you, find out what you need, get it all mailed to you for free. Uh, you can gate it so people are informed about this issue. A lot of people don't know how their pension compares so in unfavorably to other people. It's good for them uh, to hear about it, get a little riled up, get a little angry. Uh, you can have people sign the petition, gate that. You can hold a parking lot meeting, and we've got the signs that you can use there, and we have talking points that you can use there. I know a couple of people asked in the Q&A about will this webinar be available? Answer, yes, we will post it uh, tomorrow on our website and you can share that uh, and inform other people. But you, most importantly, the company needs to see people getting active. It's good for people to be knowledgeable, but if the company doesn't see people being united, then they're gonna try to no lowball the negotiating committee. Um, so we've all got to be standing together regardless of classification, higher pensions for part-timers and full-timers, more full-time jobs, higher wages uh, for full-timers and part-timers, eliminating the 22-4. We all know the strike issues. This is a strike issue. It's on the contract unity pledge card listed as a key issue, and we've got to make sure that the company sees it. This is a good question. That's how we make this actionable. That's what you can do and hope you will do it. Fill out the form. We'll get in touch. Thanks. Thanks, David. So we're going to pitch things back to our chair, Sean Williams, and wrap up. But just briefly, there's a lot of questions in the chat where people are asking about the specifics of your years of service um, and pension credits. Uh, the best way to get the answers to those questions is to contact the fund uh, to find out your specific situation. Um, like David said, the webinar will be made available on video on YouTube. Uh, like Brother Daryl Pace said earlier, please spread this around, get the word out in any way you can. And with that, I'll pass things back to Sean Williams to wrap us up here. Thank you so much, Scott. And thanks to everyone for joining us today. If we didn't get to your questions, please click the link when you get it um, by text or email and send us your questions. Order, please order your contract campaign and pension improvement toolkit, and we'll get back with you. And thank you for your time today. And remember, this contract is very important. So we all want to stay informed, stay involved, and mostly stay united. United, we win.
Thank you. Have a great day.